Hello, my friends. It's good to be with you again. Today, I wanted to bring something that, well, I tell you, probably two or three times a month, I have someone coming to me with something out of the Bible saying, Jeff, you know, God just doesn't seem fair. This just doesn't seem right. And it's a legitimate question. I'm going to bring one of the texts that I hear most often, and we're going to unpack it a little bit. It's in the first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis, chapter 4. It's the Cain and Abel story. And I'm going to start in the second half of verse 2, and I'll read through to verse 5. And a lot of you are familiar, this is actually the first murder in the Bible. Cain and Abel are brothers, and uh, Cain ends up killing Abel. But let me read the verse and then I'll kind of outline the question or kind of the feeling that a lot of people have. Let me start with this. In verse 2, the second half, it says this. Now Abel kept flocks and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. But Abel brought fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. And so let me just take that. And basically the conversation goes something like this. Wait a minute, if God is so just, why would he not accept one offering? I mean, honestly, you can see that Cain's a farmer, so he brought the best of what he had and Abel, it says, worked with flocks, so he brought the best of what he had. And I guess on the surface, maybe you could make that assumption. What I want to try to do before I'm done is get you to look deeper. And I've titled this God is Always Right because he is. And basically, I'm going to say this again, but if there's ever a discrepancy when you're reading the Bible and you say, oh, this doesn't quite look right, God just doesn't seem right, I guarantee the problem isn't with God, it's with you. And so I want you to learn how to look at the Bible and unpack it a bit. A bit. So in this instance, we see that Cain brought an offering from the fruit of the ground. Okay, so really there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, later in the Bible, we see that grain offerings are used quite a bit. However, let me say this, that a sin offering was always by the shedding of blood, an animal. And I think that some people say, well, how did he know that? Can I say this? Cain and Abel were Adam and Eve's children. They were a very godly family, if you will. God had communication with their parents. And this wasn't Cain and Abel's first time bringing an offering. We can tell that because in the Bible it says in the course of time, which illustrates they were later on in years. So what I want to say, even at that, You know, I guess he could have still brought a grain offering, but here's where we really unpack it. Abel brought an offering of firstborn from the flock and the fat portions. Basically, if you look at Hebrew culture, what that means is Abel gave God the pick of the flock. The firstborn was always something special. Firstborn always set aside. And the fat portion, this was the very best, the top of the top. So what we have here, there's a big difference in heart attitude. It appears that Cain, okay, I'm going to bring an offering. You know, he got some of his fruit together, some of his grains, brought it to God. But Abel thought about this, and it's in faith that Abel brought it to the Lord. How do we know that? In the New Testament, in the book of Hebrews, in chapter 11, verse 4, it says this, By faith, Abel, Abel offered up a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. That tells us a lot. See, Abel came to God on God's terms. Cain came to God on Cain's terms. Cain came with this sort of arrogance. Like here, take this Abel with humble humility and faith, offered the very best that he had. And in retrospect, I want you to pay attention. In in retrospect, we look back. Cain's offering represents dead religion today. It's this, uh, you know, I'll just go through the motions. I'll go to church on Sunday, but I'm just going through the motions because I have to do it. Abel's offering was made with faith. 
and his desire to worship God in spirit and in truth gave the very best that he had and gave it to God. It's religion versus relationship. Religion versus relationship. And what's interesting, guys, we see this in the very first book of the Bible. It's a preeminent topic and theme all throughout the Bible. Cain's offering was not made with faith. Cain was captain captain of his own heart. He was offering, hey, God, you're just going to have to take it as it is, where, uh, where Abel was just in humility coming before God. Now, how do I know this? If we keep reading, and in verse 5, this is a dead giveaway to Cain's sinful heart attitude. Notice in verse 5, it says, uh, when God was not pleased with Cain's offering, it says that Cain's face fell. He was angry, and his face fell. So, could not have Cain taken God's divine disapproval as a gracious communication to repent for not offering the sacrifice that God wanted? He could have, and God would have forgiven him. God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. God will always forgive. That's not what Cain did. He was proud. Hey, God, if you're not going to take this, I'm just going to get mad. And he did, and we all know what happened. God communicated with Cain. Cain didn't listen. His heart grew harder and harder, and he finally ended up killing his brother. So it's a dead giveaway that Cain's heart was not right going into it. Point of me saying all this is this, that at first reading, we say God isn't fair. No, God knows what's going on. God sees the heart. So if we see the effect, we can read the effect we have to assume that God is acting on information that maybe we don't see initially. Now, let me skip to this. There's another question that I get, and I think you'll all be very familiar with this. And I remember when I was a new, uh, new Christian, I had a hard time answering it. It was, uh, okay, Jeff, if your God is so good, what about the native in the deepest, darkest part of Africa just a real well-meaning tribesman that there's no churches. He never gets a Bible. He never has any contact with a Christian missionary. He lives his whole life and he dies. Would God send him to hell? Basically what they're asking me, will God send an innocent person to hell? I want to say this, no, God will never send an innocent person to hell. And can I say this? When people ask you that question, they're actually building a straw man and asking you to take it down. First, there's the presumption that this, quote, native never hears the gospel. Can I say unequivocally, that never happens. God never lets a man or woman live their whole life without having a reasonable chance to hear the gospel and accept Christ. How do I know this? In countries that are very, very hard for Christians to get into, Middle Eastern countries, Muslim countries, there are more stories of men and women having dreams and visions where God appears to them through the Spirit, the Lord Jesus Christ, and their interactions. God will always give a man or a woman a fair chance to accept Him. And you should really research this. In the Middle East right now, there are multiple stories about people not just having one dream, but many weeks and months and years. This one gentleman I read about seven years straight had the same vision from God. God is ultimately fair. I guess I want to say this because people say, well, you know, what about the child that doesn't get a chance to accept the Lord? We're talking about the author of fairness. God is the one that, he is the progenitor of everything good and fair. What happens, guys, and I've slipped into this myself, we tend to want to sit on the throne of our own hearts and the throne of, I guess, the world and look down on the world and the universe and judge everything according to what we think is right. That is a fatal flaw. When you read the Bible, you really need to back up and look at it through spiritual eyes. God is always right. If there's something you don't understand, I guarantee the Bible not, is not wrong. You probably are. And so get a friend, get a pastor, and go through it. And when God reveals to you what he's really saying, it's going to draw you closer to the Lord than you've ever been. I hope that's helpful. Blessings to you.